I've already mentioned the membranes of Lilliquist um, a couple of times. You can see it just beautifully here. It's illustrated in that um, diagram on the left, but on the right, if you look at the floor of the third ventricle and, and connect up the, um, the dorsum cellae um, and the mammillary bodies, you can see not only can, is the floor of the third ventricle visible on this really um, beautiful sagittal T2, this is a, a quite thin cut, um, you can actually see the membrane of Lilliquist right underneath it there. And so this is basically running in the same plane as the third ventricle between the dorsum cellae um, and, the, and the brain. Um, and, if, and if that membrane is not fenestrated, then your ETV is not successful. Here's a situation, I'm just gonna back up a little bit here. This always starts a little bit too quickly for me. So if you look at this floor of the third ventricle, in anatomy here, it's not quite as clear, right? So you can definitely see the, the mammillary bodies. And if you've studied the MRI scan, you'll know where the basilar artery is situated, but the floor is quite a bit more opaque here. Um, and so not quite the same level of comfort putting um, your blunt perforator through there. Luckily, you can see the dorsum cellae. And so the idea is stay up against the dorsum cellae, create the fenestration. Here, we're gonna open it a little bit more widely with the, the tips, and then you can see some of the thick membranes. I'm just gonna sort of scroll through this here so you can see the difference between the floor of the third ventricle and the membrane of Lilliquist. I'm just pausing there. So that's not the floor anymore. The floor has been perforated, but a thick kind of sheet of membrane um, is, still, is still completely obstructing. So you need to go through not only the floor, but then also through those membranes. And they're also very amenable to balloon dilatation here with the three French embolectomies. So you can see it right there. There's a great paused view of the floor of the third and the membranes right underneath it. So as you go through there, as long as you can see that basilar artery, that worm sticking out right there at you, you know you're through. And so we might go ahead and, and fenestrate some more and create some more perforation so that that membrane is completely dissected. And you'll see here, this is a case where we went ahead and did actually use some sharp dissection because the anatomy was so clear. We never do this through an opaque membrane or where we couldn't visualize both sides, but we just wanted to make sure that that membrane was opened up. So a little pair of scissors, just quick little snip and the membrane of liquid falls apart here. Having sharp scissors helps as well. There you go. And then now the stoma is probably twice as large and likelihood of failure here has been reduced dramatically by getting through that membrane and now really visualizing that pre-pontine interval. So that's a, a beautiful post-operative result there. <clears throat> Another example here, looking at the um, Lilliquis membrane Again, really straightforward anatomy here. Third ventricle is a little bit narrower than previous cases. You can see the walls are a little bit closer, but the mammillary bodies and the um, basilar arteries still direct you where you are. A little bit of a larger interval between the infundibular recess and the mammillary bodies here. So again, using your anatomy and seeing how opaque it is, going in an adequate distance away from the basilar artery apex, penetrating through, and then making sure you're not only going through the floor of the third ventricle, but also through the membranes. And again, I'll speed up here a little bit, so not to be too redundant. You can see really nicely there that membrane completely separate from the rest of the floor of the third ventricle. Here it's a little bit deeper, but just as important to get through it. Even if it's you know a few millimeters deeper than you'd expect, if you don't get through it there, it's not gonna be a successful operation. And there you can see beautifully the vasculature in front of the brainstem there, completely distinct between the prepontine cistern uh, and the, the clivus, which is going in an orient oriented in a vertical orientation there. So no vasculature between the brainstem and the skull base. That's always the important thing that I think medical students uh, and residents get a little bit freaked out is that there should be nothing oriented in that direction. Um, and so that, that's what really makes the ETV possible, even in those situations where it seems as if the interval is quite small. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.